Go ahead. Good morning, Lloyd. So here are your parts. We were talking a little bit on the phone before. Um, different sizes, different thicknesses. This is a GT13S. I can um, show you from here a little bit how this is working. So you have your top and your bottom belt. They run on top of each other. They rotate. The front edge grinds from right to left. The back edge grinds from left to right. Uh, in your door, you have you're picking up some of the dust collection uh, of the dust, which hooks up up here. It goes through this. Uh, right now, we don't have any dust collection connected. This is why you see more dust in the machine. The machine can be open from all three sides totally, so, so that it is very easy to clean, and that should work very well. Let me talk a little bit about your parts. So you have different sizes and different thicknesses. This is 7 gauge or 316, very clean cut. Actually, what I think what happened is your guys cleaned it up already uh, so that it doesn't have any burr, but it still has a lot of sharp edges, of course. So this is going to run very well. Then you have here this 16 gauge. The 16 gauge is pretty clean. That's going to come out really nice too. Um, you have this part, which is um, 12 gauge, and these are all 12 gauge. This is pretty clean as well. You have some splash here on the small contours and in the corners and around here, these small hexes that you will probably not remove. This part has consistent dross all the way around uh, quite a bit. I think because it is outside contours more or less other than maybe in these corners, uh, we should be removing that easily. This is 11 gauge or maybe 10 gauge, about three millimeters. So we tested already before I started this, I tested with this. So these parts also have dross. They have dross on one edge, which tells me that your nozzle alignment uh, could be better because you have it on this edge and on this edge. So it's only on one side. All the other cuts are really nice and clean. But then at the start point, of course, you have these things. And typically those are very hard to remove. This is from the top side. And you see that in the finished part, yeah, on the, in the outside contour we were able to clean up, but on the inside contour we have a little bit left and we have a little bit left on these round holes where we have the start holes. Other than that, especially the other side is really nice and clean. You see the white line. Now this one, I passed twice through the machine. Uh, once in this orientation and once in this orientation to see whether that would get rid of this and it does not really. So, since the machine is set up for this, what we are going to do is I'm going to show you this. So here we have two parts, cross side up. You see about how much dross we are having. Uh, we have set the machine for the material thickness. We have set our pressure for the top and the bottom uh, brushes. All we do is... We and now I need to scream a little bit more because the machine is rather noisy. Right now we are running at 40 inches a minute and we note that on the part, on that first part, I wrote for you, basically it was done on the GT13S at 40 inches a minute, two passes. Outside edge in one pass still has a little bit of dross. You have the dross around here. The other side is perfectly clean and has a nice, very smooth round edge. So the next test that we are going to do is we are going to run this with the dross side now.
frequency on the fly. Now with that speed, the part is even going to take a little bit longer to come out. In the meantime, we can ride on here. So that was 40 inches per minute. So you see, 
This dross, which was a fine dross on the part, is completely removed. You have a totally smooth edge, and so you are on the bottom, also aggressive. When we ran this part, which is 2.6 millimeters thick, and this part, which is three millimeters thick, and we ran it in the same setting, same setting as 2.6, Why did I run the dross up? Can't write. Why did I run the dross up? Well, really simple. Because the support rollers are in the same position always, which means the engagement of the bottom brush with the bottom edge is the same as this part. And we upped that a little bit more aggressive. Now when we ran the thicker parts, the brushes are still the same way on top of each other, but the top edge now sticks up half a millimeter more, which means the top brush engaged a half a millimeter deeper into the material than before on this part, which was on this side. So this and this is comparable. Um, and therefore, it was more aggressive on the top side this time. If I would set the machine to 3.6 millimeter material thickness, the top brushes would move along with that, and we would have less pressure on the top. And um, then probably would not have removed this dross. Now, there's a limit to what you can do with this because in thin materials, you can't really do this, the 16 gauge, because then the brushes would be too heavy on top of each other. So next we are going to run these parts. But what we will do is we will back out again a little bit with the bottom brush. We will go back to 1.2 here. And we will back off with this one on the top We'll go to 1.5, just to make it a little bit lighter. Uh, because if the brushes run very hard on top of each other, then you will have consumption even without running parts. And then, of course, we need to set our material thickness to 1.5. So the material thickness is coming down, 1.1 millimeter. And um, we back this off. 0.4 and we bought this off 0.5 so we totally backed off 0.9 millimeter we are still a third of a millimeter more of the brushes into each other pressing onto each other give us a squeeze that is from the big belts that run the brushes
angle so that we get optimum, uh, at least on the outside contours, interaction with the brushes in all angles. And again, you clearly hear the sound. Thank you. 